Welcome to worship. As we gather this day, let us come together and praise God. The light of Christ is shining deeply. It is shining brightly. The water of our baptism, the promises that we make, are burning and reminding us of God's love. So welcome this day. There are a couple of announcements. Lent begins this Wednesday on Ash Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Please join us. If you can't at that point, it will be videoed and it will be put later on YouTube as well as our Facebook. It is at 7 p.m. and we will invite you to have communion, the bread and the wine or the juice with you, whatever you have on hand. Starting on Monday the 23rd, there will be a book study. This book study, if you are interested in being part of it, is Messy Spirituality. You can get it um, on Amazon. And you need to let me know by Wednesday so I can make sure that we have all the Zoom, so I send you the Zoom link. Also starting Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent, next week at 5 p.m., there will be a short Vesper service that you will be able to be part of on Facebook. Today, some of today's service is taken from the Living Water Association service. This was put together as a gift to the churches, and we are using parts of it. Also, please continue to keep in your prayers the Pearson family on the death of Mark's mom, Anne, this past week, yesterday. And so we hold fast to the promise of the resurrection for her. Will you come now and center yourselves as we join now in worship? I cannot dance, so oh love, unless you lead me on. I cannot leap in gladness, unless you lift me up. From love to love we circle, beyond all knowledge grow. For when you lead we follow, to new worlds you will show. It is good to bring you greetings today in the name of Christ and welcome you to this worship experience as we remember that indeed we cannot dance or live or move without the one who leads the dance, who lifts us up and shows us new worlds we cannot imagine alone. My name is Nayiri Karjian. I serve as the General Minister of the Living Water Association, Ohio Northeast, United Church of Christ. And I am delighted to connect with you today electronically. So first, I thank you for being part of the Living Water Association, for the gifts that you share with the 149 churches that comprise our association all around Ohio Northeast. I thank you for providing leadership, for sharing your gifts, especially your financial gifts without which we cannot do the ministry of the association. And I also thank you for your continued ministry in new ways during these different and difficult times of COVID. I am impressed with the openness of the spirit of many of you that demonstrated in seeking new ways to be church during these new times in our lives. standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now we are standing
2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 to 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Will the children come and gather round? In your living rooms, in your kitchens, in your bedrooms, wherever you are, will you gather round this day? Today, today I want to talk to you about a day that today it's called transfiguration. Oh, that's a really long word, transfiguration. It's the Sunday, the last Sunday of the Epiphany season, that season of light that we celebrate after Christmas, right before Lent begins, that season of Lent where we journey with Jesus in the wilderness. So today is called Transfiguration Sunday, which really means that Jesus went up to the mountaintop 
and he took a couple of his friends. And when he was on this mountaintop, his friends, Peter and James, said, oh, let's, let's build a booth, a room, a tent, a place for us to be because this is magnificent. And then this voice sounds, and it's God, the Holy Spirit, and says, you are my son, the beloved. Listen to him. We hear that at other times, too, during baptism and other times. But this wonderful mountaintop experience, something that is so transforming, changing of lives happens. And then they go down the mountain. And Jesus says, don't tell anybody until after I've come again. So this whole Sunday is about change, about transforming ourselves into what Jesus sees us as, as loving, caring, kind people. How can we transform, change, to be who God wants us to be? that person that God sees already. So I invite you to share kindness. I invite you to go shovel someone's walk this week because we're going to get lots of snow. I invite you to do something out of love because God loves you. So let's be about changing, transforming ourselves into God's love and kindness. I hope you will join me. Will you pray with me? Dear God, let your light shine in us. Transform us. Change us to kindness and love and grace and hope. In your son's name we pray. Amen. The key to a meaningful life on earth is to never stop wondering and to wonder. There's an unquenchable thirst for wonder that sets us on a quest of faith, love, and justice. The more doors we open, the wider our experience. The more people we meet, the greater our curiosity. The greater our curiosity, the more we wonder. The more we wonder, the greater our wonder. The more we quench our thoughts for wonder, the closer to God, mystery, we lean. The more from the cup of life we drink. Life is a journey for exploration and discovery. Life is an adventure for experiencing and learning. Life is an adventure for exciting passion, for justice. Explore, so away from the safe harbor. Dream, push the boundaries of the unknown. Imagine the possibility for the so-called impossible. Look beyond the certainty of conventional answers. Dare to test, examine so-called truths. Excite, inflame the passion for justice and peace. The only drink from the cup of life. Never stop exploring, seeking, probing, searching. The more you explore, the more you discover. Never stop 
to stop experimenting, testing, examining, trying. The more you experiment, the closer to the truth you come. You will stop excitement, amazement, awe, passion. The more you excite color and passion for justice, the more can passion to walk in the path of Jesus. The more compassion you cultivate, the more wisdom and understanding, the closer to humanity and all creation, the closer to the Holy Spirit, the more sharing of the cup of life, abundant with all. God's Word from the book of Mark. It is the story that we hear every Sunday on the last Sunday of the Epiphany season. This Sunday we hear it from the Gospel of Mark, the Transfiguration Sunday, the transforming of our lives. Listen for God's Word. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is God's word. It is true and it can be trusted. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I was in about fourth grade, it was summertime and it was a time, it was in the early 70s, And it was a time when I was signed up for church camp for the first time. Because at that time, we didn't have church camps with grandparents and others. So it was the first time that I could go to church camp. My parents were at a meeting uh, out of town, and so we were staying, my sister and the sisters and I, with my grandparents. And so my grandparents took my sister Cindy and myself and a friend of ours, Michelle, who was the pastor's daughter, to camp, to Temple Hills. And I can remember waving goodbye as I carried my suitcase and my sleeping bag and my pillow and said, oh no, you don't need to come with us, we will be fine. And I can remember Grandma and Grandpa thinking, oh no, we need to go with them, we need to go with them. And I'm like, no, no, we'll be okay. And we were. Something amazing happened that week at camp. I 
can't remember what we learned or who was there or even what happened. But I came back after that week of church camp changed, transformed. I had been on the mountaintop with Jesus. Transfigured, changed. Mountains, valleys. Our faith is so rich, so Even now, in this time where we've been in a pandemic for a year, and we feel like we're not ever going to get out of it, our faith is so rich. We are so blessed and so loved. Our God is so good. We must not limit the spirit and how the Spirit touches us and our lives. Our faith is about entertaining angels as well as seeking the comfort and comforting the sick. Our faith is about seeing visions of a new heaven and a new earth, a new place, even as much as it is about seeking justice. Our faith is about being refreshed by God as much as it, be, it, as it is about refreshing others in God's name. And for me, that's what that week of church camp was about. Being refreshed by God and refreshing others. I had been gone from Ohio for a long time. I had, we had moved, I had come back to Ohio to go to college. And then I had gone to seminary in St. Louis. And then my first call that was in Wisconsin. And so it was a while, and I was coming back to Ohio. And I was serving in a church out called St. Paul's United Church of Christ out in the country outside of Van Wert. And I had been invited to a clergy retreat at Temple Hills. I turned left onto Durban Road. And I drove up that road with the trees overshadowing it, and I got to the top of the hill. And I pulled into camp proper, and I just sat. I was on the mountain with Jesus. And then that first winter back when I was taking a a bunch of youth on a retreat, we had loaded up with the adults and we were on our way and we drove across the state because it was quite a ways. And we pulled on Durban Road in the midst of a snowstorm. The road was flanked and the, 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 Valley was down here with the, where the people would play and do lots of wide open activities. And, and the trees were over here and the kids jumped out of the van and off they went to explore. And I knew, as a friend of mine used to say, Every time you got close to taking one of our kids to camp or to going to camp, you changed. I was on the mountaintop with Jesus. You see, for me, church camp was that mountaintop experience. I knew that God was telling me to listen to God's Son. Listen. Be silent. I have much to tell you. 
But as the story tells us, we can't stay on the mountaintop. Peter wanted to build booths, houses, to stay and live. But he was told, no, we go down the mountain. And by the way, when you're going down the mountain, don't tell anybody about your experience until after I have been raised from the dead. Life is like this. We aren't constantly on a high on the mountaintop in our relationships with God and with one another in the church. We need to know that we are not alone. God holds us through those times when we aren't on the mountaintop, when we're in the valleys, and we are faithful and faith-filled. We can't be on the mountaintop all the time. We need to walk and work through those valleys. Valleys that are sometimes very hardful, hard and very painful. They change, they transform us into the person that God is already seeing and the person that God wants us to see when we look in the mirror. Mountaintop experiences change us lives forever. That first summer of church camp changed me, transformed me, called me. And every time I drive and think about those experiences, I am changed. And I continue to grow in faith. Add on to that now. That's where Andy and Miranda and Charlie live. So every time we drive up Durban Road, I have the mountaintop experience of when I was at church camp, and now the family of my heart. Mountaintop experiences are usually very personal events. And many vocations come from those mountaintop experiences. An obstetrician once told me this. I was doing my first round in the rotation of the obstetrics department as an intern. And then when I was the one to deliver the baby, because the attending physician had not yet arrived. When I caught the baby as he was being born, I knew from then on that is the kind of doctor I wanted to be. A mountain top experience. I know that that is one of the reasons that I am a pastor, is because of that first experience at Temple Hills and church camp. The mountaintop of our experiences of our lives give us vision to see what God intends for us and for the world. When we grasp the vision that God has guided in us, it guides our life. When we open our hearts to listen for God's voice among all the voices in our world, when we accept once again what Jesus did for us. We take Jesus again into our hearts and our lives. And when we open ourselves up for God's vision for us, we are transformed. We are changed. And even in this time of COVID, and maybe especially in this time where it feels like we've been in Lent for over a year, when we wonder and we're getting tired of having to wear masks and not be around one another, when we're maybe taking some chances that we shouldn't. 
even in the midst of that. There are mountaintop experiences. And the valleys help guide us and help us learn. I invite you today to come to the mountaintop. Come and hear God and see God living within us. I invite you to the mountaintop. Amen. as we pause at this time of prayer. We open our hearts to hear and be with God. We pause to hear God speaking to us as we listen for God's word among us. Share those people that we need to pray for. Write them in the text. Write them in your hearts. And know that God hears us. Let us be about a time of prayer. I'm listening. I am listening. Spirit, speak to me. I'm listening. I am listening. Spirit, speak to me. My ears are wide open. My eyes are now open. Then to see what I may be. I'm listening. I am listening. Spirit, speak to me. I'm listening. I am listening in this moment of spirit silence. speak to me. I can hear the voices of all my kind. I'm listening, singing, I'm listening, just tweeting and howling into the wind. My ears are wide open. join together in the prayer that our Savior taught us, in the prayer of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our sins, sins as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. And lead, and lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but deliver but us from evil. evil. For yours, yours is the kingdom and, and the power and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our tithes, our offerings, our gifts that we offer to God. You may send them online. You may go through tithely. You may send them through a check. But the ministry continues to happen. Will you join me in sharing your gifts, your tithes? your talents, and your treasure. Praise 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit, Comforter. One God, triune, whom we adore. Amen. of the darkness shining Jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine Jesus shine fill the land with the Father's glory blaze spirit Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance by the blood i may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill the land with the father's glory Blaze, spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing with glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill the land with the Father's glory. Blaze, spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let them. May the waters of baptism fill and hold us. May the light of Christ shine brightly. May we be changed, transformed in the mountaintop and the valleys of our lives. May we shine, shine. Shine on the love of Christ.